As we draw the Lord of the Rings, the Rings, the Rings, the Rings of Power mania to its inevitable conclusion, there are still one or two things that need to be addressed. And of course, chief among these is the inclusion of Gandalf, or some Istari or wizard if you want, on Middle-earth in the Second Age, something that could not be possible as they did not arrive until well into the Third Age, before which they were Maya, basically. So there shouldn't be any wizards on Middle-earth in the Second Age. This is only one of the major issues with the uh, show, but the showrunners continue to act like they had some kind of creative license to do this, and it's not a complete bastardization of Tolkien. News flash, geniuses. It is a complete bastardization of Tolkien. Let's get into this. Hello, welcome back to Will of the Fans. My name is Will. See what I did there. And we're going straight in here to Bounding Into Comics. Once again, they are knocking it out of the park today as Rings of Power showrunner provides bogus answer for decision to include a wizard. Well, did you really think these guys would be able to come up with anything that actually proves a point? Of course not. Okay. The Lord of the Rings, the rings, the rings, the rings of power, because some of you have said you really enjoy me doing that. Showrunner J.D. Payne provided another bogus answer as to why he and his co-showrunner Patrick McKay, or Payne and Decay, and Prime Video decided to include a wizard in the show. Well, I mean, it's obvious because they have no imagination and they can't conceive of doing a Middle-earth show without a wizard. It's like, you got to tick that box. No, don't care what the story is. Well, what, how the story is affected by that decision, but, well, you know, might as well just put a wizard in. Rings of Power includes a character the show calls The Stranger. Don't remember him ever actually being called that, but okay. But played by Daniel Wayman, who I think did a decent job, considering all things that he uh, had to do, which were kind of vague and strange, but whatever. A portion of the story follows his character's story as he arrives on Middle-earth as a comet or meteor and then aids the hobbits in their migration and eventually defends them from a number of minions of Sauron who were tracking him and believed he was Sauron. Funny how you can sum up, what, eight episodes in one sentence? <laughs> When asked by Vulture's Jackson McHenry, McHenry, excuse me, as to why one of the Astari is included on the show that is set in Tolkien's Second Age, Payne replied, when we were laying out the menu, so to speak, that we felt would be a, in a classic Tolkienian epic, there were certain ingredients that would have to be part of it. Elves, dwarves, halflings. No, no, no. In the form of halfwits, which are hobbits, hobbits that don't exist in the Third Age, or at least they're not prominent in any way and did not need to be there. It was hard for us to think of a Middle-earth tale that did not have a wizard in it. Right, so it was hard for you to think of a Middle-earth tale that doesn't have a wizard in it. Despite the fact that the creator of Middle-earth, the author, J.R.R. Tolkien, explicitly said there were no wizards. So how is it difficult to conceive of a Middle-earth story with no wizards, knowing that that actually happened in the lore? This is your lack of imagination. You can't write a show without putting a wizard in it. Or you're scared to write a show that doesn't have a wizard in it. Or you are greedy and just really want to capitalize off the ability to have a wizard in it. It's one of these things. Either way, it wasn't done in good faith. Payne continued, we also found hints within the text that while the wizard's most prominent role was in the Third Age, some of the Astari wandered unknown among the beings of Middle-earth even earlier than that. Where the hell did you find that? Never heard of that. Finally, he concluded, whether that's one of the ones that are named, like Gandalf or Saruman, or other ones, oh, how convenient. Oh, you hacks. This answer is completely bogus. Yes, of course it is, as it directly contradicts Tolkien's writings. Right. Not only that, but there is another piece of the ever-growing mound of evidence that Payne and his co-showrunner Patrick McKay are simply liars. Yep, they are. They're liars. They're big-time liars. First, Payne and Decay previously indicated that the show did not have the rights to a number of Tolkien's writings, such as the Silmarillion or Unfinished Tales, but they did have the rights to the Lord of the Rings books. That's news. As well as their appendices. I heard it was just the appendices. I mean, maybe they just daren't touch the Lord of the Rings because it would be compared to Jackson and they can't do it. Payne told Vanity Fair in February we have the rights solely to Fellowship of the Ring, Two Towers, Return of the King, the appendices, and The Hobbit. And that's it. We don't have the rights to the Silmarillion. Well, that was a really good idea to do a show in the Second Age then, wasn't it? You fucking geniuses. Unfinished Tales, The History of Middle-Earth, or any of those books. So, so you've got the Third Age. <laughs> that's what you've got. And the appendices. <laughs> this was doomed from the start, wasn't it? Oh, God, you... You unbelievable hacks. 
As long as we're painting within those lines and not egregiously contradicting something we don't have the rights to, you did egregiously contradict something you don't have the rights to. There's a lot of leeway and room. There is no leeway nor room to dramatize and tell some of the best stories that Tolkien ever came up with. Tolkien did not come up with this story. You made this crappy story to crowbar in as much Tolkien as you could into a project that you were getting paid for and you needed to do something with it because you are irrelevant without this project. They did not paint within the lines when it comes to the inclusion of this Astari and it directly contradicts what J.R.R. Tolkien wrote in Appendix B concerning the arrival of the Astari to Middle-earth during the Third Ages. In the second paragraph of Appendix B, which is subtitled The Third Age, Tolkien wrote, When maybe a thousand years had passed and the first shadow had fallen on Greenwood the Great, the Astari or wizards appeared in Middle-earth. Yes, that's right. A good thousand years into the Third Age, so a good three thousand years from the current setting of Rings of Power. Unbelievable. Anyway, we all know about the Astari, the wizards, and how they came to be, and why they were there. The names, and all sorts of things. Uh, the, of course, Tolkien also not only wrote it in the books, but also wrote it letters to people, like this one here, where he says, Their origin was not known to any but a few, such as Elrond and Galadriel in the Third Age. They are said to have first appeared about the year 1000 of the Third Age, when the shadow of Sauron first began to grow again into new shape so yes of course when um sauron was at um well when he was affecting murkwood and that whole area and beginning to consolidate his power once again that's when the astari came not before it there was no need for them before that Anyway, we know here that, oh, of course, we also have another contradiction here that I should include. In The Lord of the Rings, The Two Towers, Faramir reveals that Gandalf went by the name of Olorin. Tolkien wrote, Mithrandir, we called him in elf fashion, said Faramir, and he was content. Many are my names in many countries, he said, Mithrandir among the elves, Tharkun to the dwarves. Olorin was, I was in my youth in the west that is forgotten. In the south, in Canus. Or in, yeah, I think I've never been able to say that probably in Karnas, maybe in the north Gandalf to the east I go not so they have him Heading east at the end of season one of rings of power to go to Rune, where he never went Why why are they doing this? It is patently obvious that these guys have no idea what they're doing They've been given cliff notes and told that's what you can use It's not hard to think of a middle-earth tale without the Astari Tolkien wrote it in the Silmarillion. <laughs> exactly. He makes it abundantly clear multiple times the Astari only appeared during the Third Age. They are in a completely different form during the First and Second Ages. Yeah, they're Maya. Finally, there are no hints within the text that the Astari wandered Middle-earth before the Third Age. They didn't. The Maya, on the other hand, did. So there you go. Another lie from the creators of the Rings of Power. Another shambolic attempt to cover up their absolute ineptitude and bastardization of the vastly superior writer J.R.R. Tolkien. What do you think about it? I'm sure you're as angry as anyone is about anything ever. Let me know all about it in the comments section down below. Don't forget to like the video if you've enjoyed it, and please subscribe to the channel as well if you would be so kind. Thank you very much. I'll be back with another video for you very soon, but until then, see you next time.